Hello, uh, John Clements. Thank you for inviting me to your North Jersey True Fruit meeting. Um, I work for the University of Massachusetts in Amherst. I'm an extension tree fruit specialist, so I work with the apple growers throughout Massachusetts and beyond. Um, today I'm going to give you a brief managed variety update, um, i.e. club varieties. Um, I know a little bit about the subject, but don't claim to be an expert. But anyways, let's see what we can, uh, we can find out about these. Oh, I said brief. Look at this. Ambrosia, Arion, Ariwa, Atento, etc., etc. This actually is a list that John Rice of Rice Fruit Farms gave at the IFTA conference uh, just last month up in Halifax, Nova Scotia. I thought it was kind of interesting. John gave a talk about retailing some of these varieties. Um, not all these are club or managed varieties. Some of them are just new varieties, but anyways, there's a lot of a lot of activity out there on this front. There's a lot of new varieties, so let's just jump right in. Now let's start with this one. Sweet Tango is kind of the poster child of newer managed varieties. You've all probably heard about it. It's out of the University of Minnesota breeding program, same place as Honey Crisp came from. It's tested at, was tested as Minnesota 1914. Sweet Tango is actually a trademarked name. Uh, it's not the variety or cultivar name. That's Miniisca. And the university has a tendency to name their cultivars after local places, towns. Miniisca is a very small town, population several hundred down in the lower Mississippi River. So uh, the Minnesota growers, because it came out of the University of Minnesota, struck a deal where they can sell directly to the public um, and can purchase up to a thousand trees. Um, this is the current status. Things may be changing a little bit on that, but they cannot sell it as a sweet tango apple. They can only sell it as miniisca apple. So signs in their roadside markets or whatever can say miniisca, but not sweet tango. The Sweet Tango name is reserved for the next big thing cooperative, which is the manager of the variety. This co-op was actually formed to uh, manage the club variety Sweet Tango. So NBT is the club. Right now, Sweet Tango is being grown in one Quebec orchard, um, one Nova Scotia co-op with several growers at Scotian Gold, uh, New York with 14 individual growers, Minnesota with two growers, Michigan 16 growers, Wisconsin one grower, and Washington State has three growers. So those are the only places that it is being grown besides the Minnesota direct market. Um, a little bit about Sweet Tango. I've, I've tasted the apple. I've grown the trees. It's a nice, relatively easy to grow tree. Nice cropper. Um, it is a drop dead killer apple. Now, I didn't coin that term killer apple. That was Mitch Lind coined that term. Um, he's out of Ohio. Um, it's harvested early to mid-September. It's got a very sweet, very sweet high bricks, syrupy flavor, good crunch. It's unique. It's a, um, it's a fruity apple, but in a good way. Um, uh, you're going to all wish you could grow this one. I wished I could grow it, but you're going to probably pretty well have to forget it for the time being as it's pretty well locked up in that club variety. Growing it, it does have a few problems. Um, they're struggling a little bit with some issues with weak trees on bud nine and some fire blight, some other issues, fruit finish issues. But I'm sure they'll work through them and Sweet Tango is and will be highly successful. Um, Modi, I, I put this one in here because it's kind of an oddball in that it really is um, being marketed currently only in Europe, Italy in particular. I like it because it's a Liberty by Gala Cross, and maybe some of you know they used to call me Mr. Liberty. Um, I worked with Liberty many years ago back in Vermont, the University of Vermont. But, you know, it seems to me a, 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 an apple with that parentage um, should be a pretty good apple. Now, it is also scab resistant. Uh, scab resistant. Um, the North America International New Varieties Network and Farmington Fresh owns the right to these apples. Um, Farmington Fresh is a grower, packer, and shipper out of Stockton, California. Um, right now, they are planning on 200 to 600 acres in California's Central Valley, and that's it. What I thought is unique about this apple in Italy, it's being marketed as a low-carbon footprint apple. Um, I just think it's kind of interesting that they're marketing it as eco-friendly. I'm sure there's some organic production of it. Um, but anyways, Italy and parts of Europe are where it's being produced. I kind of hope that California gets sick of it and we'll be able to grow it because I think I like it. It would be a good apple for us. I've got some trees up in Belchertown. 
Um, harvested in early October, they were three inches in diameter. Now these are young trees with a light crop load, but good fruit size, nice and bright red. Um, good firmness, good sugars. Um, picked at about four starch index, and I thought they tasted very good. Better than Liberty. It's a Liberty killer, which I'm not sure what that's saying, but um, could be a lot better, and that's why I wish we could grow it. It doesn't store very well, neither does Liberty. Um, Wynn Kogel here in New Jersey has been experimenting with Retain on Liberty, and he says it works very well, so maybe Retain is something, if we ever get Modi, which I hope we do, that could be used to keep, keep Modi longer. All right, let's talk a little bit about Minnesota 55. Um, it was tested as Minnesota 1955. It's a new kid on the block. It has Honeycrisp as one of its parents. A lot of breeders, including the University of Minnesota, are using Honeycrisp as a parent because it's obviously got good flavor characteristics and crunch. The University of Minnesota has um, given the rights to um, market, uh, vertically market, um, Minnesota 55 to stem out growers out in Washington. Um, it has a mid to late August harvest. It's an early apple. It is drop prone. Um, I've tried them. There's good flavor Christmas. They say it stores very well. There's a picture of some young trees. You can see the drop. Again, retain may be needed to help these apples along, but I'm sure they'll figure out that problem too with time. Um, it's an apple that you're going to wish you could grow it once it comes out and you see it, but forget it unless you buy land in Minnesota. My understanding is Minnesota growers, again, will be able to grow Minnesota 55 in limited quantities. They may even call it by a different name, trademark name in Minnesota for the direct market retail growers. Whereas Stemelt, who will be marketing it on a national level, will have another trademark name for it. Could be a little confusing. All right, Snapdragon. You probably heard about New York 1 and New York 2, which I'll mention in a minute. These come out of the Cornell Breeding Program, Susan Brown. Um, again, Honeycrisp is a parent. Um, harvest in late September, New York 1 or Snapdragon. It's only available to the New York Apple Growers Association. They worked out an agreement with Cornell um, to, again, uh, produce and market this apple in a, in a vertical fashion. Um, if you're a member of the New York Apple Growers Association, you will be able to, to grow and um, send it to a packing house to uh, market a Snapdragon. It's been extensively planted already, um, but we don't expect the first marketable crop until this year at the earliest. So that's Snapdragon New York 1. And I emphasize New York 1 because Ruby Frost is, was tested as New York 2. It ripens later. Um, the growers I've talked to pretty much agree it's inferior to Snapdragon, so it's not as good an apple. Um, Snapdragon will probably market it on national level, but Ruby Frost will be more of a local market. Um, Ruby Frost is very susceptible to fire blight. I believe Snapdragon is moderately susceptible to fire blight. So you might as well forget growing Ruby Frost and Snapdragon in the foreseeable future until they maybe get tired of it. Um, Susan Brown at Cornell does say there's some other apples in the hopper that she may release and will be available to um, direct market growers and not a club or managed variety, but I'm still waiting to see that. All right, that's Snapdragon and Ruby Frost. Now, across the country, we've got Cosmos, Cosmic Crisp. Again, this has also been getting a lot of PR and press. Um, I find the parents on this one very interesting. You, many of you are probably familiar with Enterprise. Um, Enterprise was out of the PRI breeding program, of which Rutgers is a part of that. Um, I'm not a wild about Enterprise. It's a big apple. It's a tart apple. It has somewhat thick skin, but apparently it has some good traits as a parent. Uh, maybe some disease resistance. Um, Cosmic Crisp ripens late September in Washington, which would mean October for us, but that's irrelevant. Because it's only available to Washington growers, and it was available by a lottery. For trees to be planted in 2017 so it'll be 2019 2020 i'll be retired hopefully before we see that so just forget about it just ignore it etc <laughs> evercrisp though is something maybe some of you already have these trees on order it's a honey crisp by fuji cross um, it's a product of the midwest apple improvement association which is a group of growers that banded together to look at new varieties coming out of various people in the midwest um, you can buy trees and sell Evercrisp apples if you join the MAIA. I think there's a hundred or hundred fifty dollar annual fee, but there's also I didn't realize this a dollar per tree royalty when you purchase the trees, and then from years four through ten when the trees come into production, there's a twenty cent per tree annual tree 
um, fee and it rises to 30 cents per tree in years 11 through 20. So you're basically paying an annual tree lease or production lease, whatever you want to call it. Um, go for it. Um, it's sold out for 2015. I think it's somewhat untested. I've got some trees up in Belchertown. I had just a few apples on them. Um, frankly, I thought they were kind of ugly, um, but you know, maybe they'll be better looking when they get older. Um, it was firm and does seem to store very well. Um, should be a good um, direct market apple if somebody wants to keep apples going into, say, January, February, March. Um, that's Evercrisp. The Premier Honeycrisp. I just found out about um, this uh, late fall. Um, Adams County Nurseries introducing it. It was discovered as a whole tree or limb sport. I can't remember. At an orchard, um, the Slay Bogs, I believe. That's DAS 10 cultivar in Pennsylvania. Um, oh, here we go. It's a whole tree sport that ripens three weeks before regular Honeycrisp. Um, you know, I'd say two to three weeks is probably going to be more likely because they usually exaggerate those early ripenings. They say it's a striped Honeycrisp. It's otherwise indistinguishable from Honeycrisp. As far as we know, it is Honeycrisp. We'll have to see how that one goes. Um, however, you know, I would think that some of you might be very interested in a, a strain of Honeycrisp that, that reddens up a little earlier and is earlier harvested for your Labor Day customers. Um, it has limited availability, I understand. Don't everyone jump up and dial your phones right now out in the hallway. But um, if you haven't been in touch with Adams County Nursery, you might want to get in touch with them and see if you can get some of these trees. That's Premier Honeycrisp. Um, these apples are in the club also. I um, just will run through these briefly. This is actually out of National Public Radio. Um, but some of these, I thought this was pretty good. Ambrosia is a very good apple. has been grown in British Columbia and Canada for a number of years now. Um, it's also grown in Washington State, Chile, Europe, and New Zealand. Um, up to this point, you had to be uh, licensed by Summerlin Varieties Corporation, which is a, a variety rights management company out of British Columbia. Um, used to be known as Pico. Um, there's many, many trees out there now being grown commercially. Um, Smart Fresh does wonders for Ambrosia, I think. It's a very good apple. If you can, um, it's coming off patent, and Ambrosia is not a trademark name, so I believe it's coming off patent in Canada, the plant patent, uh, this year. So, and in the United States, I think it comes off patent in 2017, which means um, you will be able to buy Ambrosia trees, grow and sell the apples as Ambrosia. What a name, huh? I mean, just think about it. Um, but it's also a good apple. I would keep my sights on that and get trees as soon as you can. Autumn Glory, I don't know a whole lot about. I know when the New England Patriots won the Super Bowl um, that Domex Super Fresh Growers supplied um, Autumn Glory apples to be given to our Massachusetts for winning the Super Bowl from the Seattle Seahawks. So anyways, I don't think it's in widespread production, but if you go to the Domex Super Fresh website, they talk about it a little bit. I already talked about Cosmic Crisp, so I won't go into that any farther. Just remember, again, it's a brand, not an apple variety. Um, it's going to be a while before that's out there in the market. Envy, I don't, again, it's from Enza. Um, I guess it's been around a while. I haven't seen it in the grocery stores, but maybe some of you have. It look, they're looking at over a million trees and being in production pretty soon. Evercrisp, I talked to you about. Jazz has been around a while. You can see Jazz in a lot of grocery stores now. Kanzi's an interesting one. Um, Kanzi is a gala by Brayburn Cross. Um, I looked at their website. I just thought it was interesting. They had a couple mm, nearly embraced in a smooch. Sex in Europe sells apples or is used to sell apples. Um, they say, quote, unquote, join the seductive world of Kanzi. Um, just kind of interesting. I think so far, relatively small group of producers affiliated with Columbia, Columbia Marketing International out of Wenatchee, Washington. Kiku, um, does anybody here have Brack Fuji? Um, Kiku is just a trademark name for the cultivar Brack um, Fuji. Um, I have some Brack Fuji trees. It's, it's a good Fuji strain. I'd recommend it highly. Um, large fruit, gets very good color if you let it mature on the tree. But if you want to sell it under the Kiku brand or trademark, again, you have to be affiliated with Columbia Marketing. Lady Alice, I don't know a whole lot about it. Lady Alice, it's a chance, oh, here you go. It's a chance seedling found in Washington State. A um, few growers are growing it, affiliated with Rear Fruit Company. I guess they're looking at production about 
300,000 uh, trees or 300,000 bushels eventually. Opal's a scab-resistant apple that, again, I wish we could get right now. Only broachy orchards in Washington State is has the license to <coughs> excuse me grow that fruit. Um, they say it's sweet, tangy, and crunchy, <coughs> said to resist browning. Hmm. That's interesting given the uh, talk about the Arctic apples. Um, I wish we could get opal. I wish we could grow modi, both scab resistant. It's too bad they're locked up out west where they don't have as big a problem with scab. Pacific rose is another Enza um, creation. I won't talk too much about it, but I think that's already in the grocery stores. Piñata um, is owned by Stemmel Growers, a trademark name again. Actually, the cultivar <coughs> is Pinova, which has been around a little while. Um, Pinova is a golden delicious by Cox Orange Pippin with a little Duchess of Oldenburg in there. It's a good apple. Um, if you can get Pinova and grow them as Pinova trees, I'd recommend it. Ruby Frost and Snapdragon I talked about. Just remember Snapdragon, New York 1, Ruby Frost, New York 2 in that order. Sonia is a club variety that's being grown in Washington. Actually, there's some growers in Nova Scotia licensed to sell it. Um, it's got a nice name, certainly. However, um, I understand it. It's not all that great in Apple. Nobody's getting really excited about that. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. And Sweet Tango I already talked about. Talk about going somewhere. I hope this apple does go because I'm tangentially involved in it. Pizzazz is just being introduced. Um, it is the uh, variety is DS3 and DS41. There's actually <coughs> 41s being grown in the east and three in the west, both being marketed under the Pizzazz name. They're nearly identical. There are Chance Seedlings from Doug Scheffelbein in Wisconsin, owned by Regal Fruit International, LLC, a.k.a. Willow Drive Nursery, and Westcott <coughs> Orchard in Minnesota. Honey Bear Marketing is licensed to... Um, grow these trees. Um, there will soon be 503,000 trees in the ground, looking at about 500,000 bushels of production. And these will be very strategically marketed for a short period of time in the middle of the winter when um, the luster hopefully wanes on some of the other varieties. Um, here's pizzazz being text, test marketed this past month of February in St. Petersburg, a Publix in St. Petersburg, Florida. Nice big apple, got good good crunch with a little bit of tanginess to it. Pizzazz is an apple that does better in storage too. So that's it. Uh, if we have any time for any questions, that's my managed variety update. And I thank you for having me to talk about these.